Welcome back! Something very suspicious just happened. After we got the magic map from the pawn shop owner, this mysterious cloaked man ate a mint and then swaggered out of here. Seconds later, we saw um, the strange guy that we uh, previously saw when we met Al Hazrat talking to the vizier. And not only did he know that we got the map, he also seemed to be uh, strangely drunk, according uh, to Al Hazrat, because he ate uh, some mints. That seems to uh, suggest that the cloaked man and the man uh, who's with Al Hazrat and called him Master are in fact the same person. I wonder. It's very strange, that's for sure. It seems there's some mints on the counter. An elegant little glass dish decorates the countertop. The dish is full of green mints offered for the enjoyment of the customer. Let's take one. Alexander takes a mint. I wonder what he puts in these things if people get drunk from them. Alexander eats the mint. Hmm, not bad. A little stale, perhaps. Eyes don't seem to be affected. Let's get another mint. Alexander takes a mint. And we got a magic map as well. The magic map is made of thin leather and has lifelike drawings of the islands on its uneven surface. As well as a mechanical nightingale. The mechanical nightingale is made of tin painted dreary shades of brown to match the coloring of a real nightingale. A small key emerges from its back. Let's try out the nightingale. Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale and listens to its sweet sunny tune. Yeah, that's exactly what a real nightingale uh, sounds like. Quite indistinguishable, as the uh, pawn shop owner said. Let's try out the map. Might be more useful. Alexander remembers what the pawn shop owner said about only being able to use the map out in the open and within sight of the sea. He correctly guesses that the map will not work here. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna have to go back to the sea then to use that map. So, head back to the beach. Hey, there's a bird here, which I don't remember seeing before. A nightingale perches on a high branch of the tree. She sings the most beautiful song Alexander has ever heard. Could it perhaps be Sing Sing? Kasima's nightingale that Jollo mentioned? Let's see. Hello, Nightingale. What a lovely tune you sing. The Nightingale only looks at Alexander suspiciously and continues to sing. Alexander can't reach the bird, and she doesn't seem interested in coming to a stranger. Looks like this nightingale doesn't trust me. But Jolo seemed to indicate that you could use um, that he could use her to send a message to Kasima. But of course, the nightingale probably knows Jolo and trusts uh, him, so would be able to. So would uh, take messages from him, but I doubt he'll take messages from us. Now let's try. Uh, we've got this uh, love poem, which Kasima might like. Well, let's see if we can use uh, the nightingale to send it to Kasima. Assuming, of course, that it is Sing Sing, which we don't really know for sure. Alexander shows the object to the bird, hoping to interest her. 
the nightingale just looks warily at Alexander and keeps her distance. Hmm. That didn't work. Perhaps she'd like a mint. Unlikely. Well, you know what they say, fight nightingales with nightingales. Wait, that's not what they say. Let's try it anyway. Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale and places it on the ground. The mechanical nightingale sings a sweet, tinny tune. The real nightingale in the tree cocks her head and listens intently. The nightingale flies to a lower branch and looks at Alexander curiously, as if she were deciding that this human might not be so bad. Wow, this nightingale is easily swayed. I'm going to save, not that I can actually die, but well, like in the previous games, I use the death save game for any situation where I want to do something that I might want to undo. Even if it is not necessarily death. Hello, little nightingale. Of what do you sing? The nightingale only looks at Alexander curiously and continues to sing. Can we take her now? Or... I don't know, pet her, whatever. Although the nightingale seems interested in Alexander, she would never allow him close enough to grab her. I guess not, but maybe we can send a message now. Let's send Kasima some words of love. If she is uh, locked up in her room, sequestered in mourning, either voluntarily or by the hand of the vizier, she might uh, appreciate such an attention. Alexander holds out the love poem to the nightingale, hoping that she perhaps is the nightingale that Jallo spoke of, and that she might be able to take the words of love to her mistress, Cosima. The nightingale swoops down and grabs the poem. Even the snakes have glowing yellow eyes. She flies off towards the castle, perhaps to Cosima? Yes! Sing Sing, what have you found? A scrap of paper? Oh, this is no mere bit of paper, but words of love. Who sent this? It must have been Abdul. Oh, Sing Sing, will he never give up? You must be careful, pretty bird. Stay away from Abdul. I don't trust him so close to you. Now go! Well, that didn't really go as planned. The little bird returns to her branch without the poem. Alexander wishes he knew what happened to his message of love. Fortunately, we know what happened. Kasima believed that the message was from the vizier. And after all, why should she think it's from Alexander? I mean... We, uh, have only just gotten here, and Kasima doesn't know we're here at all. I doubt, uh, Alhazred has told her. So, that didn't really work as we wanted, so let's restore. We can send things to Kasima, but we're gonna have to send something to, um, convince her that it's us first. Well, as before, we might be able to use the ring for that, but we don't have it anymore. But the pawn shop owner said that if we find something of equal value, we might be able to get the ring back. So let's uh, keep our eyes out for that. Also, when we gave uh, the message to the nightingale, a snake sh showed up, and even it had glowing yellow eyes. What is it with that? Must be something in the water. Alright, um... I actually want to go back to the village real quick. Yes. That's what I was hoping for. Remember that uh, the pawn shop owner, who I don't think has a name, um, said that he had some stuff from the wizard uh, that gave him the magic map 
in the back that he wanted to dump out. It seems like he just did that. I guess the wizard who owned the magic map has to be the same one uh, who gave the uh, magic uh, book to the bookshop owner. After all, the bookshop owner claimed that it was the only magician who ever lived uh, on the island, so must have been the same one. A large round pot is one of the pottery pieces on display outside the shops. Yes, we already knew that, and this time it should not be empty. Alexander sorts through the odds and ends that the pawn shop owner dumped into the pot. Magic exploding gum wrappers, a shattered crystal ball, a cracked wand, a fake thumb. Hmm. Near the bottom, Alexander finds a little glass bottle labeled ink. It appears to be empty, but Alexander decides to take it anyway. You never know when a small bottle will come in handy. True. A small bottle could be useful if we ever need to uh, store a small amount of liquid or something. Alexander's carrying a little ink bottle. It appears to be empty. But is it empty? Let's see. Alexander shakes the bottle and imagines he hears a faint swishing sound, but decides he is mistaken. Really? I don't know. Let's see. Maybe we can open it to find out for sure. Alexander decides to open the empty ink bottle. It's stuck. It's... Whoa! The ink bottle isn't empty at all. It's full of invisible ink. I've got a hole in my chest. Not very strong, but not bad. Hmm, that looks like it could be um, of use if we need to uh, disappear momentarily. That was quite a lucky find there. And now it is time for us to... Um, visit some of the other islands. Let's check out the magic map in the next video.